chicken haircuts, right? The future. Mm. Battle for Azeroth. Hi, I'm Hazel, and today I'm sitting down with Jeremy Fiesel and... Frank Kolakowski. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Um, to talk about BFA. So what can you tell us about your roles on Blizzard? Can you give me short info on what you guys do here? Sure. So I'm a senior game designer. Uh, my team has been working mostly on island expeditions, um, although I'm also working on world quests, pet battles, mounts, holidays, kind of a smattering of the really fun stuff. <laughs> and I'm the assistant technical director for the engineering team. We're kind of responsible for communicating a lot with people like Jeremy on the design side, with artists, uh, and working with production as well, uh, kind of helping this kind of dream come to life. We, awesome. you know, implement the systems that, that help them do cool things like that. cool. So my first question, um, when developing the AI that we see for Island Expeditions, what are some kind of the challenges that you ran into while working towards where it is now? Sure. Uh, so some of the initial challenges that we were running into were uh, just that big question of what makes this feel like a new and different thing? How do we get away from that concept of the WoW mob that you guys are so familiar with that runs up and punches you in the face and that's what it's really good at? So we had to start from the beginning. We built this with the ground from the ground up as its own system. Uh, they don't go into combat like normal creatures do. They don't see objectives like normal creatures do. Uh, to give you an example, when creatures go into combat in WoW, they typically forget what they were doing and they tra travel up a hill, essentially, you know, uh, sometimes in places where you couldn't path in order to get to you. These guys have more of a holistic understanding of what they're supposed to be doing across the map. They understand where objectives are and whether or not they should continue following you because you're a certain distance away or they should break off and do something else. That gives them the ability to have tactics, which is something that we would previously have to do a significant amount of work in order to get a creature to understand what it should be doing. And combine that with the sort of random generation and of objectives on an island expedition, it wouldn't have worked without a whole lot of hand-scripted work. Right. But if we built the system with that in mind, suddenly it's very easy for us to plop these guys down in one of any of our different islands in any corner of the island. Right. They can path through the entire space, they can undergo tactical changes to determine whether or not they want to attack you, slow you down, or if they want to stay away from the player. There's so many things that they can do that's just intrinsically part of their brain that we don't even really have to think about it, and suddenly they're playing the island in an awesome and very um, difficult to predict way. Mm -hmm. And in all of these ways, they feel less robotic than your sort of average WoW creature. At the same time, one of the very first issues that we ran into was that we made them too difficult. They were too good. They had too much of the perfect knowledge of where they were supposed to go. So what would happen was either they were too aggressive, and you as a player would just keep getting corpse camped by this AI <laughs> yeah. who was a jerk and wasn't trying to win, really. They just kept trying to kill you. Or they were too good at playing the island space. They knew where everything was while you were still filling out the space you are exploring, right? Um, so you wouldn't know why you lost. Uh, so we've added a number of different tuning knobs that allow us to tune up and down how aggressive they are, how good they are, and how much of an advantage they can get over you, and whether or not we feel like the funnest islands are the ones that are kind of neck and neck in yeah. the end. So we can make it so that they do better or worse, depending on how you are doing, can tailor it to your experience. Cool. Like Jeremy was saying, I think one, um, one of the more difficult things from the engineering perspective was teaching our AI that for 14 years has done nothing but want to run right at you and, and kill you in a variety of amazing ways to now think about maybe there's something more important that I should be doing to defeat the player. So that, that was a big challenge and, and you know we did dedicated uh, you know more engineering resources than we usually do toward that endeavor because it's a very important feature for this expansion. So you mentioned tactics such as having more aggressive NPC AI or you know more sneaky um, are those set up into profiles, or are there mix and match different aspects of how it might behave that are going to be different in different times that you meet them? We can mix and match different aspects, but in general, we've tried to give each AI team a theme that mm -hmm. feels appropriate to what kind of team they are. If you're the wolf pack and you're a group of three worgen, yeah, they're going to catch your scent, they're going to sprint across, they're going to try to jump you and wreck you when you're in the middle of you know fighting a difficult fight because that's more of what they're about. Mm -hmm. So you might see that occur a little bit more often with that group. While the Torin group, who uh, consists of a, a couple of high mountain Torin and has a healer, a tank, and a DPS, prefer to stay away from the player and go 
for the most high value targets, mm -hmm. but any one of these groups could at any time change what their tactics are. We just want you to get used to what they usually do so that we can surprise you sometimes, but most of the time you can feel like, I understand what this gameplay space is, I know how to win, because we feel that's very important. Yeah. It shouldn't feel like it's a completely randomly generated experience. You should know going in there, this is our roadmap to success at least. So like seven out of ten times you meet this one guy, you have a basic idea of what he's going to do, and then that one time he's just having a real weird day and he's just trying something else on you? Yep. Okay, cool. So there's going to be several different difficulty levels of Island Expeditions. Mm -hmm. Is there any kind of scorable personal metric that you can use to track your own progress to see how much better you're getting at them or something that people will potentially look up to scope out another player and whether or not they'll fit into your mythic expedition group. Gotcha. Uh, so the idea of leaderboards as a, a like how much Azurite you're gaining is a very interesting concept. It's not something that we were planning for Edo, mm -hmm. specifically because we feel it's important that Island Expeditions uh, appeals to a wide range of players. Uh, the normal difficulty of Island Expeditions just underwent a tuning pass on Alpha to better hit that sort of world questing player. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not intended for this, even on Mythic, to necessarily be a feature for the hardest of the hardcore Mythic Raider. Okay. Um, because there are plenty of features that definitely yeah. hit that, uh, that note. But of note in there, we do think that the PvP difficulty of Islands mm -hmm may be the most interesting way for that particular hardcore player to play the experience, uh, specifically because in a lot of cases it boils down to knowing when to strategically jump in and poke at the other team, but do really awesome PvE. Right. And like, what is the best way that you can PvE? So it feels like a PvE race with the ability to mess, like, imagine the Mythic Dungeon Invitational, but you could jump in and mess with the other team periodically and throw starfish at them and yeah. stuff like that. That feels awesome. We feel like it's a new way to PvE in World of Warcraft. Mm -hmm. We think that's going to be a lot of fun for those players. Cool. Is there going to be a leaderboard for the PvP side of it, or is this all unranked, random queue? I'm not planning on one for the shipping game of Edo. That's not to say that it's not something we might look at in the future. I think Islands as a potential... Um, viewable PvP experience where people are, you know, streaming their games against another team to see who can do the best is something we would like to see players do and we want to see how excited people get about that mm -hmm. before we start dedicating more resources, sure. but there's so much potential there. Yeah. In that vein, do you think WoW Esports is kind of, not migrating, but developing this whole new branch of PvE Esports with the MDI and live raid races, do you think that Expeditions could be some kind of sort of dynamic, viewable competitive experience like on a stage where maybe for example you could make some kind of special never seen before like an extra mean AI mm -hmm. and then pit some of your your brightest players against that is that something that you could see happening on stage sometime is this going to be a viewable sort of esports experience or I think it plans? definitely has the potential um, we don't want to talk about any plans for that quite yet yeah. but uh, the idea is definitely there, and it has the, you know, the, the framework for that to be awesome, for sure. And even the fact that you're asking that question immediately starts to get me a little geeked up about, hey, yeah, what if we did make the AI just really mean, and it was like three sneaky peats, and yeah, yeah. there's really cool. cool ideas there. Okay. Branching out a little bit away from Island Expeditions, right now on the Alpha, leveling 110 to 120, you're not actually unlocking any abilities or talents like you have in previous expansions. Is there a plan for a system like we had in Drainer with Drainer perks to allow you to attain things as you level, or is it pretty much just wait until 120, all the good stuff's at the end? Can you hit that one up? <laughs> I, I don't know. I got you. Uh, so, uh, as of the alpha build that's going up today, you'll start to see the Azurite armor pieces mm -hmm. implemented into the experience, and you'll be able to gain artifact power in your Heart of Azeroth during the level up experience. As you gain your Azurite armor, it will act as a little bit like miniature talent trees that you okay. get over the course of time. So, it should feel like not only is your character progressing in their different powers, their traits, their synergies, their quirks through the leveling experience, but throughout the end game experience, and even with every patch, mm -hmm. unlike maxing out your artifact, you will constantly get new things that cause your character to operate differently, that change up what your rotation are, in a way that's more interesting than I think we've ever done before with set bonuses. Will those be cumulative, or will it just be new decisions to make every time that something's added? It's like, uh, so say you get a, a, a particular piece of Azerite armor, and you finish unlocking the whole thing, you kind of, you picked the traits that you wanted for it, and it gives you more lightning bolt power, or maybe a chance to proc a second lightning bolt, or something like that, right? You get a new piece that occupies the same space. It will take place to take over that space, mm -hmm. meaning you will lose all of those perks, but you'll gain all new ones okay. that may cause different synergies. And especially if you already had two other pieces of Azerite armor that synergized in a specific way, mm -hmm. 
this may synergize completely differently. Right, this may yeah. make it so that your lava bursts cast additional lava bursts or something wacky, right? Cool. Do you think that we can see a system like the Paragon Rep Cash with Matt Rewards continued with the new factions that we're going to encounter in BFA? For sure. Uh, we want to continue with the Paragon uh, Treasure Box system. I think we're going to pull back a little bit from having low drop rate mounts on them. That ended up feeling a little bit bad when you, you know, got out you know, a number of months into the expansion, you still weren't able to get that particular mount. Um, but you'll still find the bags there, and they'll largely have rewards of the power variety, things like artifact power and stuff awesome. like that. Speaking of finding bags, is there a plan for a system like the Legion Shoulder Boom system, you know, Boon of the Zookeeper, Scavenger, Harvester? Is something like that going to carry forward into BFA? Not quite sure we're ready to announce that yet, but we'll let you know. Um, especially on the trade skill side of things, there's still quite a few things up in the air. Okay, so you might not be able to answer this one yet, but for professions, um, in Legion we had new quest lines to unlock access to the new recipes. What's the experience going to look like for a player in BFA getting access to the new crafting recipes? We're not quite ready to answer that yet. Okay. <laughs> what can you tell me about the direction of pet battle content in BFA? Uh, so we're going to continue the pet battle world quest system mm -hmm. with all new world quests across both of the different continents. You're going to continue to see fun little pet battle quirky things interspersed here and there into different zones. You might rescue a cat from a particular location. We have brand new cats and chickens and chicken hairstyles and ferrets. So we had a lot of fun yeah. with battle pets in this particular expansion. The chickens look uh, Yeah, the chicken, especially with the little silky <laughs> hairstyle that gives them a little... So we're going to continue all the same things that mm -hmm. we've kind of done previously with all new pets. Uh, we've got a couple of new uh, pet ability mechanics coming in for those type of players that enjoy doing a more hardcore pet PvE or PvP. Mm -hmm. There is a new type of pet charm that will be introduced with new pet charm rewards. And then over the course of the expansion, we do plan on continuing to expand out the pet battle dungeon system. Although you won't see anything shipping with Edo, mm -hmm. uh, those will be more patch features. Okay. Will these new pet charms invalidate older pet charms? We'll keep the older ones around for players that haven't finished getting stuff mm -hmm. in the older content, but the new pet charms will be a completely new system. Will we still be able to purchase things like the Ultimate Battle Training Stone and the Quality Upgrade Stones with the existing pet charms? That's the current plan, okay. yes. Pending feedback, everything's a little up in the air. Okay. Are you planning on any changes or incentives to PvP pet battles? Oh, that's a very good question. Uh, one of the things that we did most recently was added the uh, the family fighter achievement, family brawler Brand achievement, brawler, yeah, yeah. Um, to, to give you the tabard, because we feel like pet battle PvP is one of those things that they, we think it's a lot of fun, and mm -hmm. some players are really into it. Um, we don't necessarily want to force players into it, because we know a lot of the pet battle players are a little bit more on the casual side of the collecting end, and maybe enjoy the collection aspect a little bit more than the fighting aspect, mm -hmm. but, you know, we want to appease both of these types of players. Um, nothing specific to announce today, but we felt like that was a pretty successful little uh, add-in there that also got some people that wouldn't usually be doing pet battle PvP into PvP, mm -hmm. which is something we always want to see. Do you think that there's a chance that we could ever see a rated pet PvP ladder, or pet or any kind of pet PvP MMR, or do you think that the player base isn't big enough to support that yet? Uh, so the, the challenge, I think, always with a rated system is that you are making it necessarily more hardcore and harder to get into, mm -hmm. which isn't necessarily something that I think fits with pet battling right now. Not to say it could never happen, it's just not something we consider quite the right thing for the silly game that pet battles Yeah, is. for sure. Are you happy with the design of the Family Fighter Brawler style achievements, and are you planning on doing more um, challenges like that? Yeah, for sure. We loved how those came out. Um, we felt like we learned from the initial iteration of them in terms of when to have pets up and how many players need to do in order to get the achievement. Mm -hmm. uh, if you were one of those players that was waiting for multiple weeks for that last trainer to show up. Yeah. So we improved that on Argus by just having them up all the time, and you could do it at your own pace. Mm -hmm. um, we're probably going to continue down that route, and okay. you should see a new one coming in for the outdoor pet battles in Battle for Azeroth. Awesome. Uh, one last question, a little bit unrelated. Um, do you happen to have any info on how the new communities feature is going to function with a peer offline? Like the Battle Net appear offline. That's a great question. <laughs> yeah, I'm actually I'm not, not sure. sure that we, okay. we know at this time how mm -hmm. it's going to work. Okay. That's a good question. One day we'll find out. Yeah, right. I think that's all I have for you today. Thank you so much for taking the time to sit down with me and having me out here. No, for sure. We were super happy to talk to you, especially about battle pets. I was so excited when I found out I was going to be getting to interview you. <laughs> the battle pet person. Yeah. Like, uh, yeah. I, I had this whole list and it's like, I don't know if I'm going to be able to pull these out. <laughs> we have cool ideas. Um, so, oh, one of the other things uh, that you may have seen recently that might be worth mentioning. Mm. Um, are we still taping? Yep. Okay. Yeah. Uh, the 
Una quest line mm. that we recently did mm -hmm. um, showcased what was actually a cool new piece of technology for us in Battle Pets. And that's the ability to change how a pet looks over time based on criteria that your player has completed. Okay. So instead of just temporarily putting a hat on your pug, what if you were able to do a quest where your pug, this is terrible and we're not going to do this, yeah. loses his eye and suddenly your pug forever into the future has an eye patch on. We can permanently change the cosmetic look of your pets mm -hmm. so that you can upgrade certain pets with certain features and stuff. That's something we're really excited in order to dig into. Do you think that could ever head into a direction where you have, like, those, like instead of it being permanent, it's permanent, but it's also customizable, like a pet barbershop? For sure. I'm, I mean, for sure, he yeah, says, yeah, yeah, yeah. without talking to anybody else about it, but the idea that you could potentially go to an NPC and say, hey, give my pug his backpack uh -huh. and turn it off and on is definitely something that the tech supports I and it's a wait very to see cool idea. The pet stylist NPC. <laughs> Chicken haircuts, right? The future. Mm. Battle for Azeroth.